Hello everyone and welcome to Feisty on Friday. I took a break for a few weeks, but today I'm back and in full effect going to talk about the power of one voice. And before I kind of dive into that, I just want to acknowledge and honor what today is uh, because today is September 11th and I know there's a lot of people out there um, still going through intense emotions on this day. Um, and when I was thinking about the topic of one voice, um, you know, I, I really immediately kind of went to all the kindness that took place during a very traumatic time, um, 19 years ago. And I think about how those individual voices at that time were... I'm sure so impactful for those who were hearing the kindness, how it helped people get through each moment, each day, each hour that was excruciating. And, and that holds true every day, every hour, every, uh, every person that you interact with, your voice, your voice of kindness, um, your voice of dissent, whatever it is, um, makes an impact so yeah I just want to honor that and I also want to say it's actually my older brother's birthday today and um, I just want to just acknowledge that I'm, I'm blessed to have siblings I have two brothers um, and my older brother um, has always used humor um, in his life to, to lighten everybody's spirits. Um, and that is, that is definitely one tool about how we, how we use our voice. Um, we can use it for laughter. We can use it for lightness. We can use it, um, for, uh, so many different things. And it's funny because sometimes I get really frustrated, <laughs> this is my own stuff, when I see that people are in positions to use their voice and they choose not to. Um, it, it makes me so sad of uh, the fear that holds us back from using our voice. Um, it makes me think of that Alicia Keys song, um, when a girl can't use her voice no more I just want to cry I just want to cry for the world and that is like such how I feel about the people that have the power and they're afraid to use it and we all have that power um, and I think in a, in a moment in time especially when we're feeling hopeless and, and helpless, um, that we have to come back to this notion that one person does matter, that we can make a difference. And it's very hard to see sometimes the ripple effects that we have on people. Um, and Shige, I'm so glad that you're here. And this is a great example. The fact that my friend is here with me it just, it, it brings me such joy to know that what I'm doing matters. So just, just your presence alone. See, I'm getting all emotional. Just your presence alone gives me the, the motivation to keep doing what I'm doing. And that's the power that we have as individuals, right? Um, even as a silent cheerleader, even just standing next to somebody, even just holding somebody's hand, this is a way that you're using your voice. You're using your body, maybe even, to communicate. Um, and. You know, I come from a world of corporate, right? And 
in that world, seeing so much that was broken, it was very hard because I wanted to use my voice a lot. And I also had to choose to pick my battles because that's the other part of using our voices, right? It's like when we are choiceful, we can have even more impact um, because we're making the choices based on where we think it makes sense. Um, so I'll just use an example. <clears throat> and I actually talked about this in a recent podcast interview that's, that will be out um, <laughs> this fall. But, you know, I use this example of when I was in one of my um, places of employment, I was finding my voice. I was finding my voice of inclusion, of um, you know, lifting women up, of like identifying as, let me just use the term like inclusive feminist because I, I very much believe in, in involving everybody in that, um, in that plight. Um, and one day, I decided, I, I went to an event and I was really inspired and I put um, a postcard in my, um, my office. And I mean like small postcard and it said the future is female. And um, long story short, right, this was my way. It was, a, it was an all women team in a very male dominated industry on a very male dominated larger team that we served. And actually when I decided to put that out, I was like hemming and hawing myself. I'm like, ooh, what does this mean about me? Um, but I wanted to do it because it was a female team. I wanted to lift them up and raise them up. I wanted to encourage conversation and I wanted to represent this part about me in my office. So um, I did. And it wasn't long after that I was asked, not directly by the leadership, but indirectly to remove my postcard. So here I was, I used my voice, right? In this kind of way, in my own private office to communicate something about me, something that I cared about, something that I wanted to encourage conversations around and was asked to remove it. So, I had a choice to make. Is this a battle that I fight right now about this thing? Or um, am I fighting that battle in other ways? And I made the choice to, to remove it. Um, and I made that choice because I knew I was fighting the battle of waking people up in other ways. And I knew that in that moment, the organization, the people involved were not ready. We're not going to be ready for me to, to, to hear me in using my voice in speaking up about what that meant to me. Um, at least that's how I felt. And so I used my voice in other ways. Um, I clearly was not happy. Um, but I chose to continue to have conversations in the places where I knew I was having impact. Um, so I, I share that to say that sometimes using our voice isn't necessarily in the most visible way, um, although visible ways are important. Um, but I also think that true change, true sustainable change happens with conversations that are very small, that happen every day with different kinds of people and in different environments. And when we choose to engage in those difficult conversations and use our voice, that can often make an even bigger difference, a lasting difference, but we may not be really seeing it or acknowledging it. So that might be a conversation with a family member that made a racist comment. That might be in standing up 
when you see somebody being treated poorly um, out on the streets. Um, and even if you don't see the results in that moment that you wanted, an apology or somebody going, aha, I think you have to know that using your voice, you may not see the impact right away, but you have to trust and believe that you are making a difference. And I think this is why it can be so difficult for people to make the choice to use their voice and to stand up for what they think is right and to have perhaps the only opinion of dissent in the room because, because you have to trust that you are making a difference even if you don't see it in that moment. And so I think part of gaining confidence in using your voice is in celebrating your bravery every time that you do. And I just want to also just say in this moment, thank you for those who are joining Wing Wave. Great to see you here um, and Beth as well. Um, please feel free to post a comment or a question. I'm happy to answer today. My Feisty on Friday segment is about using your voice. And I've talked about using it both really verbally and also non-verbally as a way of communicating and messaging, whether that's in support or whether that's um, to oppose uh, a, a point of view, or whether that's just to speak your truth, whatever that is. Um, and so a lot of, you know, the work that I do in coaching is also helping people find their voice. Um, and, and myself, I'm still working on it, of speaking up, um, even if I'm really nervous, um, even if I'm afraid of backlash, um, even if I'm afraid of my own truth of, of even acknowledging it. Um, but there are, there are definitely things that we can do to help us be more confident and in, in using our voice and using our messaging, um, which first of all, education is a, big, is a big thing. You know, if you want to speak out about a topic, um, but you feel ill-prepared, you can definitely research about it and feel more confident that you have some structure. Um, and, and this comes up in, t in, the, in the world of kind of what's happening with the racism in America. Um, I think a lot of people want to speak up about it, but they feel ill-prepared. So go do the work, go read the books, go get more comfortable with the language that you're using. Um, at the same time, know that it's okay to make mistakes know that it's okay that things aren't going to come out exactly the way that you want and yes you may spend hours maybe even days afterwards just you know beating yourself up about what you said because you wish you said it differently and part of the process of using your voice is also being kind to yourself and saying you know what but my my goal was bravery and not perfection and so it's okay and i'm not going to beat myself up about using my voice um, that's a journey. Um, so I just implore everybody who's listening to know that there's a lot of different tools that you can use to get yourself more comfortable um, and more kind to yourself as you, as you come into your voice. Um, also finding support, you know, when you do stand up and you feel nervous and maybe there were some negative consequences as a result you know, reaching out to people that can support you in, in letting you know it's okay and it was awesome that you used your voice for good. Um, and that could be friends, that could be therapists, that could be coaches, that, I mean, all kinds of people. And I'm gonna introduce a, maybe a, a new topic for some of you, but there is something around, um, you know, our different energies that we carry with us, right? And sometimes we can be blocked with different energies. So maybe we're blocked in our love life. Maybe we're blocked in speaking out. Maybe we're blocked in feeling connected to something greater than ourselves. And that can be linked to this concept called chakras. So, there's seven different energy um, sources within us, 
And you can definitely look up all about the chakra system, like it's everywhere. Hey Jay, nice to have you here. Um, talking about using our voice uh, for change, for good, for impact. Um, and started talking about the chakra systems as a way of talking about the different energies that we have and the fact that we may be blocked with certain things. Um, and this is something that I've worked with with my own healing process. Um, and one of the chakras is the throat chakra. Um, and you may even feel energetically when you want to say something but you're really nervous and you kind of you physically feel like restricted in your in your throat um maybe you feel like it's closing um maybe you start coughing i don't know there's like a lot of different kind of physical symptoms that may come up to indicate to you hey like there's some blockage going on in this energy source this this throat chakra source and there are different ways that you can work through that. Um, in setting intentions to clear that, there are definitely different types of healing modalities that deal with energy systems. Um, so I just invite you um, as just one way of exploring. If you wanna use your voice more, that's, that's something that you can explore and maybe helping you um, release some of your own blocks regarding that. Um, yeah, I think that we, well, yeah, I talked a little bit about fear, fear holding us back from using our voice, um, fear of consequence, maybe even fear of offending. Um, but I think there's even a bigger fear that is around fear of really acknowledging our own power because there is such power in using our voice for change. And maybe underneath all these other fears are, are, is a fear of what does it mean if I can actually make a change? That's a powerful thing. And am I afraid of that more than anything else? And if you really do the digging, you might find out that that is actually the truth. Um, to know that you can help people see things a different way, to know that you can impact somebody making a different choice in their life. Um, those, that is, that is powerful. Um, and when used for good, I mean, that's, that's kind of what it's all about to me. Um, but I think in these times, you know, when there's, when we can tell ourselves stories of complexity, when we can tell ourselves stories of powerlessness, um, I really want to encourage everybody to come back to this idea that it only takes one person. Only takes one person. And, and I think that we, you know, we can see uh, things that we will interpret as, it's, I'm not enough, I'm not enough um, to make the impact that I want. But you are, but you are. Um, and it's again, it's these ripple effects. It's these 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 small conversations. It doesn't have to be on this major platform. It doesn't have to be on a TED talk. It can just be, you know, you're interacting with the woman at the checkout. You know, and maybe you're standing up for somebody that was treated poorly or unfairly. Um, and. And I think today, more than ever, more than ever, we need people that are willing to use their voice. Because change has to come from everywhere. It's not gonna come from the top down, it's not gonna come from the bottom up, it's gonna come from everybody, collectively making small choices every day. And that's the power you have, to make small choices every day about how you're gonna use your power and your voice. And you know, I think about also organizations like Vital Voice Training, which is a beautiful organization um, that helps people in finding their voice and feeling comfortable with their authenticity. Because sometimes that's what we need to work on in order to really free ourselves, to be ourselves. We need to work with other people that can help us see what's happening. Because we may not even know the behavior patterns that we, that we have. And our communication patterns come so much from our youth and our childhood and what were we taught about speaking out and what were we taught about how you communicate 
and what's okay and what's not okay, especially for women who, um, you know, this expectation of just being nice all the time. Um, well, honey child, no. <laughs> you know, your truth may not mean you're going to be nice because you're fired up because nice doesn't get shit done all the time. Um, because being liked isn't the objective, right? Like being brave, being courageous. Those are objectives that really matter. And then you finding your way through that, you finding your way. How can I be brave and courageous in my way? Because it may not look like the extroverted way that gets a lot of the intention in our culture. And I, and I think that um, especially for those of you who identify as introverts, and maybe it's even harder to use your voice. There's a lot of different ways to communicate, and there's a lot of opportunity for giving yourself permission to using your voice, again, when you feel comfortable and safe um, and willing to take the risk. Um, so it makes me think of the book called Quiet, if you haven't heard of that, but for introverts out there, and you know, I read it as an extrovert, you know, I wanted to like understand more even about my own introvertedness, but also about those that I work with that are introverted and understanding like what are the challenges in that environment. But that's a little bit of a tangent, I just wanted to kind of share uh, that. But um, yeah, I think also using your voice can also mean not using it. So what I mean by that is sometimes when we are around toxic people that are spewing all kinds of things, um, negativity or bashing or whatever, um, you can also make the choice to not respond, to not validate those comments, um, which can be equally powerful um, than saying, uh, you know, I don't agree with you. Because sometimes, you know, when you're making choices about where to speak up and you, you may feel safe or may not feel safe, but another option is to not respond. And that can be uncomfortable in and of itself. But that is also a way of choosing where not to use your voice um, so that the other person doesn't feel validated in what they're saying. Um, because a lot of times what people are doing when they're spewing all this stuff or they're gossiping or whatever is they want to feel valid in how they are thinking about something else or somebody else or whatever. Um, and when they get that affirmation from you when you're like even nodding your head, oh yeah, yeah, that person is, you know, so rude or whatever, um, you're giving them fuel uh, to do that behavior even more often. So silence is another way of communicating dissent um, in a way that might feel safer, um, but that might also be uncomfortable. So yeah, um, that's kind of where I'm at with using your voice. It's a really big topic um, and I know it can be very scary and it can be hard to know how to navigate, especially if there's concerns of consequence, especially when you feel that others have power over your fate or what happens. Um, but some of, I think, where we are in the world today is that we need more people taking risks and more people being willing to experience the consequences for what is needed in the world right now which is to, uh, to remove the toxicity, to acknowledge the wrongs um, in, the, in how people are treating each other right now, um, to stand up to nonsense, uh, to stand up to, to things that are not based in truth. Um, and because the ultimate consequence, right? The ultimate consequence of not using your voice can be people die, you know? And I think that that example is unfortunately uh, very front and center right now, very front and center. That the ultimate price that we pay by not doing the work 
to to find out how we can use our voice is that lives lives can be lost because we continue to let the status quo go because we are paralyzed by fear of what it would mean to to stand up to power so on this feisty on friday i am going to say to you find the power within use your voice experiment you can do it in small ways and move up to bigger ways whatever works for you and yes again you're right it is a choice it is a choice of of where we put ourselves out there and where we're vulnerable and where we choose to fight our fights um and i'm just encouraging you all to do it experiment with it in a way that um, feels good and authentic to you. And if you want to learn more about how you can do that or discover that for yourself, please feel free to reach out to me at breakthrough at toscadimateo.com. You can also visit my website at toscadimateo.com to learn more about what I do in the world of coaching and consulting. So thanks for joining Feisty on Friday. I appreciate all my guests that came on today. Um, and yeah, let me know the stories of where you're using your voice. Ciao for now.